controller for the current generation of Series X and Series S, Xbox consoles is one of my favourite controllers to use. It's well designed, it looks great, and the attention to detail with ergonomics through shape and textures makes it comfortable to use across a variety of game styles for long periods of time. However, it seems that when it comes to controllers, they don't make them like they used to. A little while back, I did a fix on a friend's Series X controller with a damaged analog stick, and this week, another friend has passed on a Series S controller with a non-working left shoulder button for me to have a look at repairing. Hi, and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps, and in this video, I'll be showing you another repair for an Xbox Series S or X controller, this time specifically looking at the shoulder buttons known as bumpers. So these buttons are situated on the very outside edge of the controller and as a result they're particularly vulnerable to damage if the controller is dropped or as can be the case with some angry gamers even thrown. Now I'm not talking about you of course I'm sure you'd never dream of doing such a thing. Anyway a friend of mine passed me this controller to have a look at because the left bumper had stopped working altogether. So there's a tactile micro switch inside the controller on either side that gives you that sort of satisfying click when you press the L and R bumpers but in this case the left one had no click at all. It would move, but it just had a sort of squishy response and the console didn't register any input at all. Clearly there was some physical damage inside causing this lack of connection. So I needed to open up the controller and further investigate how the button actually works and if it was possible for me to fix it. <laughs> To open up the controller, you'll need a prying tool like a spudger as well as a T8 security screwdriver bit. I used the one that came with this kit here. If you end up replacing parts, you would possibly also need new switches, which is a much more involved job, but it's actually more likely that you'll just need a replacement bumper strip. This is a plastic part that can be easily found online for around £10. Alternatively, if you want to try and fix any broken plastic parts yourself, you'll ideally need a decent adhesive. I use super glue with a spray activator and I'll talk to you a bit more about that later on. As always, I'll leave links in the description for any tools or parts that you might need. So first, you'll need to open up the controller. There are two plastic shell pieces that clip into place on the back of the controller, and they cover up four of the screws that we need access to. So these need to be removed first. As they're plastic, a little heat will warm up the material, making it more flexible, less brittle, and easier to remove as the clips themselves are less likely to break when you apply force to pop them up part. In this case, I'm using my heat gun. I've got it on a low fan setting at 100 degrees, being careful to keep it moving so I don't damage the plastic. If you don't have a heat gun, a hairdryer should do the job quite nicely. Once the plastic is nice and warm and you're ready to remove it, it might take a few attempts, but just be patient with it. You don't want to break anything. First, push the flat end of your spudger into the seam at the bottom of the trigger, and that will start to separate the pieces. Hold the end open with your fingers, being careful not to trap them, and then wiggle the spudger further along the seam, popping apart the plastic clips as you go. Once you've dislodged that whole seam, use all four fingertips to kind of grab the edge and simply pull to pop the shell off the controller. Take a look at the inside of the shell once you've got it off and you'll see all the clips hopefully still intact and looking at this will help your understanding as you move forward and do the other side. Once you've got the first side off, the other side is much easier because you can see where the clips are going to be located. Again, Heat the plastic until it feels warm, start at the trigger end and keep it held open as you slide the spudger along the length of that seam. Again, firmly grip the shell at the open seam, pop it off and we'll now have access to the four screws. Use the T8 security bit next. Note the hole in the end that allows you to remove these particular security screws. If you can see the screw I've got here, there's a little bump inside the hole that prevents you from using a standard Torx bit. Yeah, cheers for that Microsoft. Using the right bit, they should come out easily. Make sure you put them in a safe place ready for reassembly. With these four screws removed, you'll notice the controller is still held together. That's because there's actually a fifth screw in the battery compartment that's covered with a sticker. You could carefully try and remove the sticker if you want to, or you could do what I did and just push the screwdriver straight through the sticker, making a hole and allowing access to the screw. I'll leave that one up to you. At this point, you'll feel the whole assembly loosen, but don't worry, it simply allows you to remove the rear shell first and then lift off the front shell. There's no need for any own clipping and nothing's gonna fall out unless there's any broken bits. So at this stage, I was in uncharted territory and I had to take a closer look at the bumpers to try and figure out how they actually worked and what might have gone wrong. After a little poking around, I worked out how to disassemble the bumper assembly. There are clips to the left and right of the home button. 
I use the pointed end of a spudger to gently lift the white tabs and then unclip them from these little black pins that held them in place. Once these two were unclipped, the central section was easily removed from the shell, exposing the bumper strip. There's a clip at either end of this that's easy to disengage and then the whole assembly lifts off. But watch out for the triggers when you do this as they're going to lift slightly without the shell keeping them in place. When I investigated the bumper area on the controller, I found one piece of white plastic that had snapped clean off from the main strip. And when I tipped the controller up, some other little tiny bits of black plastic came away too. It seems the internal black plastic is harder and a little bit more brittle than the external shell. So do be careful with any of that. Looking at the bumper strip, I quickly worked out where the white plastic part had broken off. And I looked at the controller's internals to try and figure out how those bumpers actually work. It turns out that the tactile switches are mounted inside the frame with a small rectangle opening where they can be accessed. The plastic tab actually slides into that hole where the button resides. When I checked with my spudger, both of the switch components inside still had a clicky response, so I knew that they were fine, and it was clear that the bumper wasn't working because of that plastic tab that should engage the switch had been snapped off. So this left me with two options, either fix the broken part or replace it. In this case, I opted to try and fix it as I didn't want to spend any extra money on behalf of someone else, but mainly I didn't want to wait for a replacement. I wanted to get the job done there and then. However, if this repair job fails, I'll know it'll be an easy fix with a new bumper strip. If you've bought yourself a new bumper strip, you can ignore what comes next and just reassemble your controller. It should be good as new. So what I chose to do was glue the tab back onto the assembly in the hope that it would still be secure enough to continue working without breaking off again. So to do this, I was planning to use super glue. So I used my soldering mat to work on so I didn't risk damaging my work surface with the glue and the activator spray. I looked closely at the parts and figured out which way around it needed to go. At the tip of the broken off bit, there's a flat side and an angled corner. And on the other side is a sloping edge and a rounded corner. The rounded corner needs to face towards the center of the controller, if, if that makes sense, sort of facing the other tab. So what I'm using here is called Mitre Fast, but there are lots of these super glue and activator kits available that do pretty much the same job. It's fantastic stuff because you can hold the glued parts in place and then spray and it basically sets instantly without having to wait and it secures your part in exactly the right position. Squeeze a tiny bit of glue onto the broken part of the bumper and then carefully position the other plastic piece in place. Once you're certain it's located correctly, hold it steady and apply the spray. The glue will set almost instantly. What I decided to do next in this case was add a little extra glue afterwards on either side to further strengthen the joint. It did make it stronger, but I'd avoid doing this as it also presented a few other problems. More on that shortly. Again, I sprayed the glue to make sure it all set properly, and then I wiped off any excess spray, dried the whole part off with my heat gun before tidying up, ready for reassembly. Just as a quick aside, if you look underneath the controller PCB, you can see four solder points on either side where the switches are attached. They're pretty big solder points, like clearly these switches are well anchored in place and the components themselves are fairly substantial. They've got a rubber cap on the button part. So really, I think these are unlikely to break in comparison to the thin plastic tabs on the bumper strip. So that's usually going to be what's at fault if your bumper's not working. So to put this bumper strip back on, first hold the triggers out of the way with one hand. It's a little bit awkward, but you'll manage. And then put the bumper strip back in place and then give it a little test. Now on this one, the smaller black clips on either side seem to have broken off but fortunately this wasn't part of the problems I experienced and it didn't cause any issues later when I reassembled. So anyway, when I tried the bumper at this point, it still didn't work. After a little investigating, it turns out the glue had actually added to the thickness of the tab and it was causing some issues. So one thing I hadn't really factored in with the glue was that the tight tolerances between the tab and the size of the slot meant that there's not really a lot of wiggle room. So that extra layer of glue was preventing the tab from passing smoothly through the gap. So I removed the bumper strip again and used a sharp knife to trim the tab back to its previous thickness, being extra careful to avoid cutting my fingers or snapping off the tab that I just glued on. Take your time with this, because if it happens to you, if anything goes wrong, you don't want that. So it's just worth being patient. After the first trim, it was kind of working, but on the release, it was sometimes sticking to the trigger. When I moved the trigger out of the way, it worked fine. So I figured this must have been because the bumper was being pushed slightly down onto the trigger. So that means the tab must still have been a little bit too thick on top. So again, I removed it, trimmed a little bit more off the top, put the bumper strip back on 
and this time the switch was working nicely. I clipped on the central retaining section and it all seemed to be functioning really well. So onto the rear assembly, which is thankfully fairly straightforward compared to taking it apart. Put the front shell on top of the unit and then flip it over. Then put the rear shell on the back and be aware that there'll still be some slight gaps at this point for those two shells to clip in place. I started with the central screw, being careful to turn anti-clockwise first to let the screw locate in its thread before screwing it in fully. This holds it together enough for a quick test of the bumpers and they worked well. I compared them to my other controller and it seemed to be back to normal. In fact, it actually sounded a little bit more precise than the bumper on the other side. After this, just put the other four screws in place, again being careful to locate them accurately and screw them in without applying too much pressure. You don't want to damage that plastic thread inside. With the screws in place, give the bumpers a last check before adding the snap-on shells in the opposite way to how they were removed. Hook it in place on the outside edge and then apply some inward pressure to just clip them securely in place. Take your time and be careful not to pinch any skin. Make sure everything is together properly, testing out all the buttons, sticks and triggers move properly and then you're good to go. So then the final check involved is using the console itself. First of all, I connected it to the console and updated the controller firmware in the settings. Then I went into test mode in the Xbox accessories menu and it displays on screen basically whatever button was being pressed and in this case the left bumper now worked with the display shown to indicate single presses or rapid succession with no problems at all. <laughs> So that's another Xbox controller fix. If you've experienced an issue like this and you aren't able to get your hands on a replacement part, then this might be a good solution for you. So the advantages are you don't have to spend any extra money on the new parts and the controller itself retains that complete originality in terms of parts. The disadvantages are that it's a little bit more fiddly than a straight swap and it might well break again at some point. That said, it did feel quite sturdy. When the glue was set and I trimmed off all the edges, it was just like the other tab. Now time will tell whether or not that's going to be a worthwhile long-term fix but again if it breaks I'll just get another tutorial put together with swapping out the replacement part we'll see if that ends up happening with a replacement bumper strip you needed to spend about another 10 pounds or so and wait for it to be delivered also if you're not using original parts that might be something that bothers you but in general it's more likely to be a very good reliable long-term fix as always it's nice to have options isn't it if you do try this fix let me know how you get on in the comments I'd be interested to find out so if you're new here, thanks for watching. And if you've been here before, welcome back. If you've enjoyed this, then likes, comments, subs, signing up for notifications and all that is always appreciated. And if you want to support the making of future videos, you can always check out my Ko-fi page. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And while you're here, why not check out some of my other videos? There should be a couple of links popping up about here around about now. This is Joe Bleeps signing off from the shed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.